I'm gonna play some War Game Red Dragon. Come on, skip this, skip that. <sighs> All right, random cast it is. Hello, everyone. This is Xander Chiron, and I am back with Random Cast episode 30, I do believe. Is it 31? I lost count. Whatever, who cares? Anyway, in this battle on the blue team, we have Murray with a Unicorn General deck, I do believe. And on the red team, we have Otimpo Milk. Is that a weird name? Otimpo? Autumpo, whatever, and he's using a NATO Airborne deck. So yeah, let's see how this goes. And you might have, there we go. All right, starting with the blue team with Murray. Have an FOB, and it makes sense if you're going to be, especially if he plans on using like a lot of helicopters or something. Having an FOB is going to be pretty handy. And let's see, you got Panther that's going to have infantry in it. I'm guessing. Oh, it's on hardened, so it could be upvetted line infantry or it could be downvetted shock. Got a Cassiopeia, or Cassiopeia, however it's pronounced. Got the Canon. I'm guessing these things, these dudes are going to be flying up in here-ish. What else do we got? Two command start, presumably. Got an Iltis there, so the second Iltis. Or the second command. Oh, yeah, there it is, Iltis. Kato. Is that like Commando Wagon or something? I'm not sure what that stands for. Commandant Wagon? Who knows? Anyway, back on topic. You got some Commando Para there. 1390s for Recon. I'm guessing that's... Oh. Okay. Wait a minute. Is this the Razman deck that he's been using for your core? Is that... Panther there. This is going to be Rima 85, and that's Reservis in the uh, AMX 13 VTT, so that's going to be Legion in that. Got the um, Milan F3 in the VAB, and that's going to be Panzer Grenadier 90. Got two Crotals, Leopard 2. Is this Razman? Is this like his current name for his? Whatever account, is it like a Smurf account or whatever? I actually should look at what the tempo is doing. Anyway, so he also has a fob, also doing two commands start, presumably. Yep, got a uh, group to command in the Panther, Gazelle for Recon, Link's Age 7. That's going to be SAS, or it could be paratroopers, upvetted, I guess. Anyway, you got UH-1H. Oh yeah, it's the Japanese one, so that's going to be Chumad in there. And looks like that's going to be SBS in there, I'm thinking. More Chumad there. That's going to be Rangers in the V-150. Ooh, that's the Dutch AMX-13 recon one. That's fun. I like it more than the French one. Also got the Tansam Shorter, that's awesome. Or the Tansam Sam short air is awesome. I like it. I love it. TGB 13. That's going to be. Oh, it's, is that like Nordsland Jaeger or whatever called? The 15 man light infantry unit? The recoils rifle that weighs more than the guy carrying it or whatever? Anyway, got. Humvees? Is that upvetted rifleman? Light rifleman, maybe? I don't know. More Rangers. Because I don't think the US gets any shock infantry in their Humvees. Or not, or yeah, I think Rangers come in Humvees, but there, that's recon. All right, so looks like Murray's going pretty hard into 
this area. And it looks like he's going to be sending some dudes into golf. Looks like the Chiamat's going down there. Thanks for that game. It's been, I was wondering when he's going to do that. As for Murray here, looks like he is going, once again, pretty sound. He's going to focus pretty much in the top part of the map with only light forces in golf and Charlie. As is fairly typical for this map. Yeah, got some dudes peeling off. Looks like Commando Paras. Probably might be some Reservies peeling off as well to follow it. Maybe a Crotile. Panther's getting far forward. Cassio P is probably going to sweep around. Oh, might try and take out the H7. However, if they can land, then those uh, SAS in there will, or presumably the SAS in there will wreck the Cassio P. Unless it gets the auto cannon on them and gets the stun going. I just assume the Cassio P can see it. Actually, it can't. Oh, yep, now it sees it. Murray's can is going after the UH-1H. Oh, okay, so one Chumat went there, the other one sweeping around to try and get into the top part here. Cassio P is falling back. Or it could be shifting to go up this AH-7, but yeah, it's on the deck. Oh, it is S it's SBS in that. Okay, so that's the one with the recon, yeah. That's the one with that. Anyway, Gazelle goes down without actually killing anything. Oh, Humvee's getting engaged at close range by an auto cannon. That's not going to go well. Yeah, they go down. Yep, a better rifleman 90 in there. And they're caught on the open. Uh, Gazelle watching down there. Got 1390s in. Yep, reserves in Charlie. And yeah, it was Rima 85 in the Panthers. So yeah, it looks like it is Rasmund's Eurocore deck. Or it's modeled after it. I don't. Could, I said this could actually be Rasmund. I don't know what names he's using. Crotel's done looking at shots on the Gazelle, because why not? Oh, on F3 goes down to the Panther before it can take out the Tansam. And the Crotel misses again. I think it... I don't know, I think the Cassio P might have gone the H7? Something shot it down, I think. Oh, Karnas is coming in. And that Crotel's out of ammunition. That one might get him hit on it. And it misses. Does it get another hit? Arm is it, it, ooh, Turbine Fairy gets out on 1 HP. These guys got pretty messed up. Number 2 took some damage. These guys look like they're fine. They're shaken. These guys are mostly fine. So I don't know if that's an intentional split or just RNG split. I like that. And Legion missing their shots on the V150. And yep, Nordsland Jaeger. Jaeger. However it's pronounced. Jaeger. Oh, and another current ass is out. That one's out of ammunition. This group has out. That one's one missile, and this one's not going to be in range. Oh, where is it going? And it misses. It's like trying to. Okay, see, vacuum. And miss. And I don't think it's. Oh, it does get the hit on it before it gets out. But now that's three crow tails in a fairly close proximity, so that's probably going to be instant death for anything that gets over in range. Oh, two say AMX 13s just putting the hurt onto those reserves, but the Leopard 2 is engaging that fairly close range. Oh, Norzan Jaeger going at it with the Pads of Grenadier. And SAS getting wrecked by, looks like, yep, a pair of AMX 10 RCs. And down here, up Tempo has nothing in golf. He does have an A10 A, A Thunderbolt coming in though. So going up to the Leopard 2, I take it? Because it might be able to turn away with, with while well, being, you know, minimally outside the range or just inside the range of the Crow Tiles. Yep, there goes that. And, oh, it's in range of one of them. Oh, nope, gets out before. What did it blow up there? Is it just a vehicle? Okay, it's the Cassiopeia that has landed. Oh, mortars coming down. Looks like the rangers are spotted on the open. But they're going to be able to make it to the buildings by the looks of it. Oh, Gazelle getting a bit cheeky there and going down. 
Another Leopard 2 coming in. And a pile more Panzer Grenadier and Reservists. Oh. He's marking the Crotal. Might have been spotted, or it could just, you know, he was paying attention to where it shot his gazelle from. Nope, Jupiter's moving down. I'm presuming that is going for the Crotal. Yeah, Murray's pushing the MX-13 forward a little bit. He really needs to be a bit more aggressive here in golf and just take it so that the tempo doesn't get an opportunity to go in it later. Oh, that Crotal is spotted by the SBS. That's going to be... That's going to be in danger of getting hit by the Chumat, or Shumat, however it's pronounced. Now Crotal is just falling all the way back. Maybe he wants to relocate it. Or it could be, yeah, the Nordsland Jaeger are pushing up. Yeah, looks like they dealt with the dudes. Depends on going to do it. Oh, and Chumat's going up the MX-13s. Oh, and Raphael is out. Does this guy also have a card of F4F KWS as well? And, oh, A10A is out as well. Does it spot it from that far out? Not yet. Oh, MX-13 is engaging the Northland Jaeger. F. 12 AP power, so they need two shots to take out the MX-13s, I do believe. And Murray has definitely spotted the Thunderbolt now. And a, I don't think a Tansam is going to be, be able to cut it against a Raphael. Oh, that's one hit. Oh, but I said that's rear armor, so it's taking... Oh, side shot. And it goes down, and Tansam's firing on it. See, that's 50 ECM. Versus 50% accuracy. And that guy has one missile left. Oh, reserve is engaged out in the open. Oh, and that Crotal's in danger of being overrun by some rifleman 90. Oh, it's spotted. And it goes down. Oh. Reserves are drawing fire from the Norzan Jaeger, so now the AMX 13s are engaging it without any danger to their to themselves. Oh, man, but the mortar's coming down on that's really laying their hurt on them, but they are going to take a while to die just because, you know, 15-man unit. And here comes the Kernas. Oh, Leopard 2 smoked off. Oh, it's just flying. Oh, Crotal misses. It's only one in range. Oh, it keeps missing. That one's out of ammunition. Oh, it's going to make it out. That thing's like 30% ECM, isn't it? Yeah. That Crotal is a massive disappointment. I think a Crotal's only miss when they're shooting at your stuff, not when they're shooting at the enemy stuff. Everyone knows that. F 15A. Hmm. Not something you see very often. It's not bad. I prefer at that price. I'd rather have the CF 188, but to each their own. Oh, Leopard 2 taking fire from the Rifleman 90. That's 15 armor on it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and there's the second Kurnas coming out. Ah, both of these Crotals are out of ammunition, so yeah, it's going to be engaged with impunity. Leopard twos in smoke, and one directed and one near hit, so it goes down. And here comes the other Kurnas. Oh, and his evac, he must have lost the sight of the target. Alright, the Alrak is the one with less range than any other AT weapon, because reasons. Anyway, these Rima 95 are just getting wiped out in the open by a pair of AMX 13s. And they're gone. There's yep. 13 rounds a minute. It's a hoot. And here comes the Kuranas again. And a Baz. So he has two ASFs. I think he is an airborne deck, so he does get these guys. Uh, gets him a plenty. Oh, Raphael's engaging the Kurnas. Oh, but the Eagle's turning out the Baz. Oh, this Raphael's in danger. And it trades with the Baz. After getting one hit on the Kurnas. Oh. And the Crotal donks its shot. Oh, but it does get a Lynx, I guess. 
there's a, is it, is that a, yeah, it's a panther. Wait, can you see the crew in it? Nope. And a gazelle? Is that a, I don't know who's or where, because both players have them. So that's a bad trade for Mary. He got a 100 point ASF with his 180 point one. And yeah, it's a one per card because I'm pretty sure that Raphael was on elite. Oh, Rangers shooting up the reserve base, but it looks a bit. Yeah, Murray really needs to keep these crow tiles supplied because those. Current asses are really uh, putting the hurt on them. Might even want to invest in, say, like a Roland. Oh, and those Rangers are spotted. Well, between the Rangers and the AMX 13s, yeah, that Crow Tail spotted. Oh, and Colonel Ass is out again. Big surprise. And that guy's one missile running away from the SBS and Rifleman. Sess of B is coming out. Jupiter is trying to make it over there. Is the Colonel going for the Crow Tail? Is it spotted? It is. And oh look, an F4F KWS. And that's where we're going to evac before the F15A can get a hold on it. Because F4F is just perpetually disappointing. That's the only way to describe its ability to actually do anything. Not really, that's being a little unfair to it. It can do a fair amount of work just because it does carry, you know, four SRAMs and three AMRAMs. It's a fair bit of ordnance, it's just. As, you know. AIM-9L's 4HE plus the 5HE AMRAM means it can't do, you know, SRAM plus AMRAM hit to get a kill. It needs, you know, two AMRAM hits or, you know, three missile hits often. And that's, you know, assuming no misses. So it can oftentimes end up expending a lot of missiles just to take out a single target. Oh, Rangers engaging Commander's Para. Oh, SB's engaging. Once those 1390s get stuck in, then yeah, those Rangers are going to be in big trouble. Yep, that's a lot of HE coming down on them. Oh, and the Panther's moving in as well. The Tensam is moving away from the supply truck. That's the Norwegian one. Interesting. Oh, my. Oh, Reserve is just getting wiped out. Oh, is that the tank tap one? Yep. They nerfed this one a little bit. I think it had like an extra range tick or one more AP or something. It had a high AP for what it was, for what it had or something. Interesting enough, I'm surprised Murray hasn't tried capping Charlie yet. But I think maybe he just... He is getting pushed pretty hard here in Echo, so he probably just wants to spend all his points there. And neither player is really confident enough in Echo or Delta to try and cap it. Hope we have, yeah, those SBs are definitely going to put the hurt onto those 13s. And everyone's just missing. Oh, Chumat. Oh, and the 1390 went down, so that Chumat's not going to have any. It's going to be hard to spot, and the links, yeah, those SBs are going to trouble. Oh, Mortar's coming down on the Chumat. Yep. Oh, is it spotted, though? Yes, it is. Oh, and Thunderbolt. There's a second one. Oh, hello, F4F. It isn't trying to zoom in on me, but I guess it did. And the, this guy's out of ammunition. Yeah, that's the problem with the AMX 13s is that they do go through ammunition pretty quickly. F4F is way over there. I guess he doesn't want to try and engage the Eagle. Oh, Z, no, F4F is going after the Thunderbolt, and the Eagle is turning in. Okay, nope. ASF fight. Oh, F4F, mutual kill. And the current ass and Thunderbolt now have free reign of the skies. Well, I guess there are the Crow Tiles, but... Uh, 
Now actually, for the Thunderbolt to get anything, yeah, that's going to probably fly in in range with at least one Crotal. Oh, but these reserves are caught on the open. However, once the 13s getting stuck in, that could help even the odds. And the Mortar. Oh, Amex 10's engaging the 13 in the open. Oh, Panther. Putting their hurt on those guys. Nope, Thunderbolt's coming in. What's it going after, though? Oh. Oh, no, the helicopter went down to the Crotel. Oh, no, the BTRs are going after the Panther. Thunderbolt's running low on fuel. Because, yeah, it's slow. And it doesn't have the greatest time over target. 135 seconds is not bad, but just because how slow the A-10 is, it makes it feel like it's not nearly as much as it should be. Ooh, I see I have some closer shooting range with the AMX 13s and are getting shot up. There you go. Murray's gonna need to get some dudes in here. Otherwise his uh, spawn is gonna be in danger. Oh, and there's an Iltus coming out for Charlie, so he does want to get that plus one ticking. Oh, Legion, I've expended most of the ammunition on something. I didn't see what it was. Or is this the one from the beginning of the game? However, that mini me is just giving him a lot of hurt on that Norseland Jaeger. And Kurness is bombing a Crotal? Nope. 13. Took one hit from the Crotal, and it goes down to the F4F. Alright, so I think that's one Kurness down, one to go. Kurness, however it's pronounced. I would say Kurness. Because that's ass in its name. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? Okay, that's the, yeah, the new region one. This thing I thought was one of the cluster bombs. I was like, what? That's the one of the two 1,000 kilogram bombs, but it's only 20 ECM. And goodbye, Legion. I actually got his own unit and the Legion. And I think the Norzan Jaeger might actually be more expensive. There's not enough left in the field for me to check with, though. Oh, is that Commando's 90 in the UH-1 Chewy? Hmm. Oh, Commando's pair a little... Ah, being overrun. Oh, but looks like they did manage to whack the one AMX-13. Oh, that's a lot of hurt coming down those reservies. Or have mounts. Reservis? Anyway, Murray is taking a plus one now, so that's... Um, well, eight conquest points to seven. And FRF. Yep. And a straight up fight, the Commando pair will win a fight with the AMX... Or with the Rifleman 90, but you know, with the AMX 13 closing in. Well, that one's out of ammunition, but it does have the machine gun. It can still contribute. But this one does have its gun. Yep. Hope it fires. Misses a shot. Oh, it's now in the open. Oh, is he going to take out the right? Oh, no. He's, okay, he's trying to... Basically, he's trying to move it in and out of range. Oh. But now the rangers are going to get stuck in. Oh, Pan's a good idea of popping something out of the open. Sick, is it? Yeah, Humvee. The or HMMVW, whatever it is. High mobility multi wheeled vehicle. Multi purpose and something like that. Oh, Leopard 2 and an RCSV moving in. And some more reservies. Of course, because that's what we need is more uh, meat spam. Oh, these pans are gonna need, gonna need some immediate support. Oh man, Gazelle has pushed up all the way to there. Is that, ooh, is that spawning things? No, it is not. Wait, is it? Quick, quick check. Yeah, it is on top of the forest. Oh, Leopard 2's gonna even the odds between the Panzer Grenadier and the Rifleman, and the Mortar's gonna help as well. Open oh, the 1390s engaging the riflemen. Oh, what is this? Fighting Falcon, Thunderbolt 2, and a Baz. And an Eagle. It is an airborne deck, so 
Oh yeah, he's just he's just gonna get that F or F out. Oh, it might take a hit from the M9L though. Oh, well, it makes it out fine. Finding Falcon though. Oh, goes down. Baz escapes. Oh, I think that even the Fighting Falcon even missed. Oh, no, Thunderbolt's coming in. Oh, yep, there, there you go. Oh, misses its first salvo. Second salvo hits. Third salvo hits. Oh, but it, well, one hit, one miss, so it's left on 3 HP. And, yeah, have 15 A's just hovering. Oh, because the gazelle moved in. Yeah, it has, and now it's, it is being seen, so that BTR is going to engage it. Or just scare it off. What missiles does this have again? Right, AIM-9J and the AIM-7F. 1390 is wrecked something. D-150 by the looks of it. Yep. Oh, Sessa B coming in. Oh, and there is a rolling three out now. Yeah. Surprised it took this long. But if you can get like a pair of rolling twos within, not like, uh, not necessarily like right next to each other or in a stack, but within a decent position, like you have, you know, one here, one over here. So they have a decent bit of cross coverage and yeah, they can really put the herd in. A, or they all miss, you know, they miss all four of their shots because fuck you. So this would be, oh, Crotel's out of ammunition. He's really got to keep these things supplied or in pairs because yeah, now it's going to wreck those Panzer Grenadier. Yeah, if the, you know, if the Amex 13 doesn't do it for him first. Oh, Baz going after the F4F. Oh, but it's overextending. So, rolling three. Missed every shot. Oh, turbine fit. And it goes down at the last second. So that means no more ASS for Murray, but he still has that plus one that's been taking the entire game, and now it's at 70 points. At this point, even if Optimpo can actually can cap blah, 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 can cap Echo and Delta, won't be a huge thing for him because Murray does have golf. CF one hundred four. Oh, it looks like it tried to snipe the Rolling Three and got shot down for its troubles. That actually is the nice thing about the CF one hundred four is that it does have. Um, I think it, it is. Basically, the rockets on the CF-104, like the Canadian one at least, are, um, whatchamacallit, CRV-7s on it. They actually have more accuracy than other airplane-based rockets of the same size, so... They actually can semi-reliably snipe, a, like, especially most AAPs have light armor, so it can snipe them pretty easily. Oh, rolling three. Oh, it is turned off. Oh, Crotal misses. Rolling three should be turned on now. Yep. And it gets one hit. Ooh. Oh, would have been a hit, but it's just too slow. Now that rolling three is completely out. Oh, and Eagle and Baz are out again. Not really needed, though, because Murray has no more ASFs unless he brought a third card of ASFs, like the Mirage 2000 120 pointer. Anyway, as I sang. Uh, Murray is calling out a command infantry squad for golf. So that's going to be a plus two. And there's an Iltis coming out for Echo from a tempo, but Murray has the point lead already, and they both have the same number of sectors available to them. And of course, the supply truck gets stuck in the mud. Oof. Oh, if those Rangers were engaged by the 1390s, they'd be in trouble, but alas, it's just the reservists in them. Doesn't look like Murray's actually using his FOB that much. How about a tempo? No, neither of them has really drawn that much from it. Oh, Celtic's coming out. I wonder what that's going to go for. Is it just provide extra 
Is he worried about helicopters, or is it just there to provide extra beef against planes? I don't know, because it is fairly short range, you know, against planes. It's decent range against helicopters. Oh, what's that? Cannon coming out over here. All right, so what scores it? Uh, zero, zero right now. 112 conquest points for Murray to seven for a tempo. However, grouped command should be getting to cover relatively soon. And another cannon coming out from Murray. Oh, is the, is the Thunderbolt going after the cannon? Makes sense. Between the, uh, the gun really does put the hurt on helicopters because how fast it shoots. And also since the A-10A has such a low airspeed, it has a fair amount of time to shoot with it. Yeah, and it's gone. However, there's a Celtic supporting this area and another cannon as well. That crow tail really needs to be resupplied. Oh, Panzer Grenadier are moving up, but they're caught out in the open by SAS. However, it looks like an RC and an SB are going to be joining him. Oh, but the Panzer Grenadier go down. Oh, they're engaging the Tanzan. Oh, oh, they keep missing. It was pretty fortunate for it because, yeah, that's, you know, no armor. Okay, so it's Sesso B and Cannon going around this way. Baz is, is going after the Panther, the Celtic. Oh, he's just flying around for fun. Because, yeah, Murray might want to consider getting some air defense here. You know, so bombers don't have their uh, way with them. Looks like Sesso B, two cannons, yep. Yeah. And a puff. I have a feeling that that Celtic's not going to be enough to uh, take care of all these unless it gets, you know, no misses. However, at the planes, especially potentially drawing fire, it's not going to be good. Oh. Oh, no, he's going after the puff. Oh, Sessa B goes down. One cannon goes down, but now it's out of ammunition. So I say that gazelle kind of worked out. And there's another one coming in. Is that 6 HE on the... Yeah, no, it's 5 HE on the Mistral. Oop, Thunderbolt 2 over here. Oh, but there's two crow tiles shooting at it. Oop, side shot. No shots. No hits. No, and they just keep missing. Nope, a bunch of weasels coming out over here. Oh, group to command. Is group to command being spotted? Yes, they have. Oh, 1390s. Closing in to try and engage with the machine gun. Is there a bomber coming in? Nope, just an F-15A. Oh. These guys are getting pressed really hard over here by Murray. Yeah, he's moving in on the Eltis. Oh, Gazelle's moving over here. Does he think the command's in a different spot or is he just trying to spot things? Oh, that just go down. Oh, okay, it's the Panther. 15A is getting out. Looks like a shot. Oh, did it take a swing at that? I don't know. Oh, Commando Para just getting chewed apart by that 13. And the cannon also put some hurt on him as well. And, yeah, that's the Canadian one. But yeah, I think they have 40% accuracy compared to like 30% or something on most rockets. I think they might have one more range tick. I don't know if, I can't remember off the top of my head what you know, the ranges for the other hydropod rocket planes. Well, 70 millimeter rocket planes, because CRV-7s are not hydras. They're better than hydras. Mostly because they have a ridiculously high um, velocity compared to most other rockets. Which makes them, and some other things, they're also just very accurate. And tempo surrenders. All right, so Murray was victorious with 164 conquest points to seven. With 2,540 kills to 2,000 or to 2,255 kills from Otempo. Yeah, that was an interesting battle. I think Otempo maybe spent a little bit too many points on planes. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I tend to not have a particularly plane-heavy 
style, but sometimes I do go very heaven class. Depends on what I'm feeling, I guess. But anyway. But then again, Murray's he kind of got a bit unlucky with his air defense, really, because he just kept missing so many different shots. I think part of it maybe because of how close in it was it tends to mess up accuracy. But it's just, yeah, it's just very unlucky. And just, yeah, Tempo with his, his planes, he just spent so many points on him, and they really just, I don't know, it's just they didn't really kill very much. Like, I think most of his, you know, points from airplane kill, you know, from kills as airplanes did were, you know, shooting down ASFs. But I digress. That was just, yeah, Murray had definitely had the better ground game going. Well, he had a lot of fire support between the 1390s and the various flavors of Amex 10s. He had a lot of fire support. The Tempo had a fair amount as well, points, but it's just not a lot of fire support as well as the Tempo just gave up so much ground, so much, you know, so much control at the beginning by not going into his one pointer on the bottom part, you know, on the other side. Instead, he just focused on, you know, the two that were right next to each other. Or they're both right next to each other. You you know what I mean. He focused way much. He focused entirely on the top part of the map and just completely neglected the two pointers on the bottom, or the the two one pointers on the bottom. You get my drift. There's two points available there. Murray maybe should have had, because Murray was in a maybe a slightly precarious position with those helicopters coming over, but not really just because they're not they're particularly dangerous helicopters. So yeah, maybe. But he maybe should have had a bit more for air defense there. Also, I think he maybe should have called out a pair of Rollins a bit sooner into the game, as soon as the current asses started doing their thing. That's my opinion on the matter. You know, yours may vary. And also, just since I was talking about the CF 104s, uh, deck armory air. Let's see, roll. There we go. Then for comparison, and uh, let's find other rockets. So he yeah, has more range and more accuracy than 70 millimeter hydras. And that probably carries on from the most part for against everything else. So yeah, so it does make it, you know, it's very good at sniping, you know, light units. Oh, bumping my microphone. Uh, but yeah, that, that was a fun battle. Always nice when you get, you know, relatively high-ranked gameplay put on the replay site. And yeah, I'm just gonna call it here. I'm Ep I'm Xander Tirana, and this was Random Cast episode thirty something. You guys have a lovely day.